So I've arrived at where I want to be and had a lot of snow. So the first thing I had to do was dig a big hole to find the fire pit. I could literally just about see the top of it, like bulging in the snow. Other than that, I had to dig a large hole. Always very important to do this because as that fire gets going, anything that's close to the fire is going to melt. And what you end up with is a slippery, icy slope that tapers towards the uh, fire. That's never good. So what I will do is I will get this set up and then uh, I'm going to show you how to light a fire basically anywhere. I mean, if you light a fire, look at the snow here, it's a foot to two foot deep. Over there, it's probably three feet or more. <laughs> I know that that's supposed to be flat in there, so it's obviously just piled up. So the uh, it's very important to know how to light a fire in cold weather. And uh, this is what I'm going to show you how to do today. Now, one of the other things that I'm going to talk about today is the right tool for the right job. I keep hearing people, I keep having people ask me, full tang knives, Mora knives, complain, complain, complain. As people say, if it's not a full tang knife, it's no good. Well, you buy a knife and you use it for the purpose for which uh, it was designed for, basically. So I'm just going to set up this little tripod here and I'm going to run through each one. And each one has its own use. So I'll sit that on here and I'm going to run through each one and what I use each one for. Now, this little knife here, obviously I'm not going to be splitting logs with this. This is what I call my food prep knife. This is an Oponal number no. 8. I've had these things since I was eight years old, which is 50 some odd years ago. And uh, I can tell you now, these things are amazing. They fold up nice, they hold a good edge. This is the um, stainless steel version. There is a carbon steel version. People go on about sharpening the edges and you know which one's best and which one isn't. I can tell you now that this holds a very good edge. I can slice tomatoes with this with no effort whatsoever. So good knife use it for the purpose for which it was created yeah next knife Mora can't beat Mora I like to anybody that knows me knows I'd like to have lanyards on everything I don't like dropping stuff so I like to have lanyards on everything and it uh, just makes it nice the, uh, on the I don't know if you can see that thing here on the fire steel on this one they have just a normal fire steel what I've done is I put a bit of shock cord on the end of this one and all that is is one of those little elastic things that women use in their hair and I find that that actually works really good put that in there sit that over there just an extra layer of security that ain't coming off of there no matter what so more a knife this one is pretty sharp so if I'm doing edges I need to get a fire going cuts real good it's real sharp. It does the job for which it was created. You've got to go somewhere to break one of these. If you break one of these, you are trying to break it. You know what I mean? If you're trying to lever out stupid great things with this, you're going to break it. I mean, this has got a thick blade. This is the stainless version. Absolutely brilliant. Hard to lose that in the snow. Yeah. So, again, right knife for the right use. Then we come to this one. My ever trusty Gerber. I had somebody wanted to buy this off me the other day. It's not for sale. It, uh, they no longer make this one. It, uh, it is not for sale. And it, uh, again, holds a reasonable edge. It will split up wood for fire lighting. You know, I can use this one, being a full tang all the way through. I can beat this one a little harder than my Mora, but trust me, I have beat the crap out of that Mora, and it's good. I'm just gonna save up these little pieces. Good for getting the fire going. And again, you use a, a tool for what it's created for. If I want to split wood with this, I can, yeah? It'll, it'll split wood fine. I mean, this, this is, yeah, this is old, dry, garbage wood. As you can see, it's pretty snowy in the bottom there. I'll show you what I did in the bottom there in a minute. Just get a couple of more small bits in there. I'm 
because this is old dry wood, you don't have to break this up too much. I like to do that. And then I can just sit that across the top of the fire. It stays right there. Lots of edges. I don't know whether that one will split. That's plenty good enough to get that fire going. Just make sure I can see my cotton ball in the bottom. So again, great tool for the job. Very, very, very solid knife. Very well built knife actually, very well designed knife. A lot of people give it stick because of the uh, guy's name that's on it. However, it, uh, regardless of what it says, Gerber made it. The guy that's name is on it. Did a good job he didn't get to do the job he was doing by being an idiot you have to be uh, extremely smart to be able to do that job right so in the bottom of here let's bring you a little closer in the bottom of here i have set up fire ready to go in any fire make sure you've got something keeping the fire off the ground whether you're having a log fire out in the middle of nowhere or like this one today which is just basically just a breakfast fire I've got a cotton ball in the bottom there I'm trying to aim a spark on it I think I got it mate did I get it <laughs> yeah I did yeah <laughs> so as soon as you finish with tools as soon as you finish with that put it away put it where you know where it is and as you can see I mean a, a cotton ball in Vaseline I have yet to find a better way of lighting a fire than that Other than chucking a can of gas on it, <laughs> throwing a match at it. I'm not sure what else you could do really that'd be any better than that. But as you can see, I mean it's it's away already. Uh, hard to beat that. You can't get much simpler than that. It uh, in terms of fire making, it just doesn't get any easier. So what I've done, my usual trick. I put a whole bunch of old receipts in there that I don't need rather than just throwing them in the garbage like most people do I save them up and do something useful with them like lighting a campfire yeah. so we will let that get going these are good hardwood blocks this stuff burns pretty good yeah that's why I save it up and bring it with me I've got a couple uh, decent sized logs today and I'm going to put on there once I get a, a base going I'll put this in the middle of the fire and I'll use this to lean firewood up against and the reason for that is it uh, allows air underneath it you don't really want a flat pack uh, fire you want uh, an angle so let me put another few small pieces on there and get some heat and then I can get some of these logs done. all right I should get back to you in a moment as you can see, here I am a couple of minutes later. Fire's going good. A lot of heat in there. It's pretty cold this morning. They said minus 13 on the way out, but it's supposed to be getting up to about minus 5 today, so it shouldn't be too bad. Yeah. In summer, if you say to somebody it's going to be minus 5, everybody thinks, oh god, it's going to be really cold. But in the winter, and somebody says, oh, it's only going to be minus 5, you're like, woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the things about living here. We have two seasons. We have winter and not winter yet. So, as you can see, the, uh, there's still snow in the bottom of that fire there. You but because the fire's up on a base, it's out of the snow. I mean, it doesn't matter whether you're lighting the fire out in the middle of somewhere like that over there or whatever. As long as you dig down as much as you can, get rid of as much of the snow as you can. Create a decent sized hole so that uh, you're not creating an ice rink for yourself later in the day and uh, put some logs in the bottom the bigger logs you can put in the bottom the better I've seen people put you know they get some like two inch little sticks and put them in the bottom and lay them out yeah you can do that but if uh, there's a lot of snow on the ground you want that fire up off the ground for as long as possible so if you've got some six inch round logs two foot long yeah put three or four of those down and build your fire on top of that trust me that'll uh, by the time those logs get burning, there ain't going to be no snow underneath that fire. <laughs> but uh, in the process of getting it going, you know, all the as that's heating now, the moisture that's in the bottom of that fire pit there, it's starting to come up through the fire. So it will actually cool the fire. 
obviously you don't want that, you want as much heat in there as you can, so you build in a fire out in the middle of nowhere, get some decent sized logs on the ground first, and then build your fire on top of that. So you'd be surprised the difference it makes, you know. If I'd have just lit that fire straight on top of that snowy junk that's in the bottom of there, it would be hissing and whining and complaining and not doing very well. But as you can see, that's going really, really good now. It's going well enough, in fact. For me to chop on some bigger logs. There we go. Now that log will heat up. Now I've got a few more of those in the car. Good. Uh, that log will heat up nicely and it gives a, a bit of structure to the fire. So as that burns down through, I can lean stuff up against that and that will uh, make a, a, a decent fire with lots of air going through it. And that's the most important thing. Make sure you've got plenty of air going through your fire. That's the other reason for digging out the uh, around the base of these fire pits if you use one of these. Because uh, there's air holes in the bottom, as you can see down at the bottom there, there's air holes. But they ain't no good if they're all covered in snow and ice and junk. So you've got to let the air into the bottom of the fire. That's why I like these fire pits with the open piece on the front because the amount of heat that comes out through that gap is absolutely amazing and it, uh, it's not all just going straight up in the air and really good fire to sit in front. That's one of the reasons I come to this site, you'll notice I come to this site quite often. There are hundreds, literally hundreds of places around here that I can go that have fire pits. However, most of them are the solid steel ones that go all the way around to like a big circle. Uh, they don't chuck off as much heat. They really don't. These are really good warming fires. So when I'm doing a breakfast fire, I quite often pop in here on the way to where I'm going and uh, get some breakfast going, and then uh, go off and enjoy the day. Right, I will uh, keep an eye on this fire. I will sort out a cup of tea and some uh, food here and get going. And that is now a nice warm fire. Trust me, my feet are nice and warm there. So if I have warm feet, I'm sitting by a nice warm fire. You know what comes next? Nice warm cup of tea. There we go. Have to do it. My, my signature shot now. People keep asking me for that. <laughs> oh god, that feels good as that goes down, I tell you. <laughs> oh, toasty, toasty warm. I was going to put my winter boots on today, but it, uh, it said it's supposed to warm up a bit later. Like I say, it should be about minus five, so. Oh, damn, that feels good. That tea feels real good as that goes down. <laughs> it's amazing how you can feel that travel right down inside you. That's good. The sun's coming up further over that way now. Like in the middle of winter, the sun comes up over there. But it's starting to come up over there now. So that's a good thing. In summer, it comes up way over that way. So it, uh, we're starting to get longer days. Yeah, I'm gonna have to start getting up earlier and heading out to the mountains. It was almost daylight when I set off today. <laughs> almost, but not quite. Yeah. Oh, that is so warm. Cheers. Have a nice brew. There we go. Yeah. More people should do this. I know it's a little crazy. People say, what the hell do you do it? Well, there's something nice about just sitting around a nice warm fire. Feet up. It's quiet. There ain't nobody else out around here. There's a lot of deer tracks through here, and that's about it. You look over there you can see the deer tracks through the snow and stuff yeah, there's loads of deer up through here but uh, saw two moose on the way out that was pretty good they were close to the road though so i had to slow right down because you never really know what they're gonna do they're not the smartest of animals but uh, and i tell you if one of those uh, runs in front of your car and you hit a moose oh, right. yeah that's the end of your car i can tell you Oop, a bit of wood gas coming out there yeah, wood, yeah. That's good. When wood burns, it's not the actual wood that's burning, it's the gas. The heat turns it into gas and then the gas burns. But that, I can tell you now, if you could actually feel the heat off that. Ooh, let's put that right down, look at that. Yeah, boy, oh, yeah, trust me, that is warm. That is lovely. Yeah, I'll do some more of that, that's good. And the sun is coming through the trees. Yeah, there they yeah that's what i was just saying about the sunshine see where it's coming through the trees normally in the middle of winter there's another bench over there in the distance you can see you can see how deep the snow is over there i don't think anybody uses that one in the winter because <laughs> the snow is literally up to the bit you sit on so that's 16 inches of snow because an average seat is 16 inches off the ground so there's 16 inches of snow on the ground plus whatever's on top of the table there 
but as you can see the in the winter the sun between here and there comes up directly over the top of that bench and as you can see it's now over there that's good it means the days are getting longer yeah longer days are good <laughs> yeah, the fire's doing quite nice now got some nice embers in the bottom there i'll let those flames at the back die down a bit and i'm going to get some breakfast on the jays have already turned up i just had the crows come by all I need now is a woodpecker, and I've got the whole crew here. <laughs> I'll tell you, that is nice. Oh, toasty feet. Toasty, toasty feet. Oh, and we have a squirrel. <laughs> Everything's waking up because the sun's getting up. Right. Yep, yeah, squirrel's making a racket. <laughs> right. Let me find some... Uh, food to get on this fire and use up some of this heat to cook me some breakfast. Right, let's get some breakfast going here. As always I'll just keep breakfast simple. That's not good. I'm gonna lose my hot coals. There we go. You don't want too much flame for breakfast. Oh look at that, it's going nice. Let's throw something in the bun. I only get the little buns today. I prefer the big the big long ones, the Italian ones, what they call them, Vlagios or whatever they call them. Those are nice buns but I could only get these ones today. But, uh, let's just warm this through. As always breakfast needs to be simple. Things like oatmeal, simple, uh, hot dogs, simple. These are spicy ones, these are, these are spicy hot dogs. But it just makes for warm food, it gets a bit of heat in your body, it gives your body something to work on to generate heat. And anything in the cold that generates heat is a good thing. Yeah. Unfortunately, human beings, we need heat. We have no heat, we die. Simple as that. Whether that's heat from food, heat from a fire, heat from in our houses, our cars, whatever. We need heat. No heat, we don't survive. Very simple. But, uh, one good way of getting uh, heat in your body, like if you're going camping and it's really cold overnight, one of the things you want is a, a fairly decent meal before you go to bed. Something that's going to generate some heat in the body. A lot of people, they, they think, oh, I don't, don't want to eat because then I might have to get up and use the bathroom in the middle of the night, yeah, or whatever, you know. <laughs> that's, that's way better than uh, freezing. Yeah. Ooh, these are just starting to get nice and warm. Let's uh, give the other side to those as well. I've got a bunch of these with me, so I will do these up. Oh, yeah, that's hot. That's good. And this is the easiest way to make breakfast. I find these are good too. I see people making videos and they're, they're using sticks and you know whatever. Yeah, it's it's great. But uh, these. These are brilliant. I can move logs around with these. I can use it for making my breakfast. Absolutely brilliant. Oh yeah, that's nice and warm. Look at that steaming. <laughs> we'll put that on there before we burn that. I'm going to sit and enjoy breakfast. I didn't bring any ketchup. Should have bought some ketchup. No, I've actually cooked I've got some flames going in there again. You don't want too many flames when you're cooking food. You want the nice coals. There is breakfast. Ta-da! Yep. Mm. These are very good. Like I say, anything that can uh, create heat in the cold weather, that's what you want. One of the things I find when I see people doing like bushcraft videos and all that kind of stuff. You can use a Nalgene bottle for boiling up some water and putting it in your sleeping bag or inside your clothing when you're asleep and what have you in the cold weather. But they're big and round and bulky. I actually prefer to take those, uh, they're like the old fashioned rubber red hot water bottles. They pack up really, really flat. They weigh next to nothing. And they hold the heat better. I'm telling you, those, those things hold the heat better than uh, an algae bottle does any time. And you can also use them for transporting water. 
so they, they have a double purpose. I like to have a double purpose for everything I have with me. But uh, those hot water bottles, absolutely amazing, I swear by them. But, uh, all right, I'm going to enjoy this breakfast and I'm going to have another cup of tea and I will get back in a moment. So just a quick recap on the, the uh, bushcraft knife um, situation, if you like. That's it. That way I can keep my hands But buy whatever knife you think is good for you. I mean, Gerber, they make all kinds of different knives. I just happen to have this one. I do put lanyards on everything that I have. This one is uh, an amazing little knife. I've had this a while. I'd say somebody wanted to buy this, by the way. <laughs> it's not for sale. The, uh, it's a good, strong knife. It uh, throws really good sparks off the back here. Again, if you're thinking of buying a knife, you are hard pushed to beat the Mora. I'd, I'd like to have lanyards. Mora don't put a hole in the back of this. I wish they did. I had to drill a little hole through there and just put a bit of paracord through it. But it's, uh, this is an amazing knife. Absolutely brilliant. Does an amazing job. It uh, holds a good edge. I mean, this one is like super sharp. I could slice tomatoes with this if I want, but the blade's a bit thicker. My other knife that I have with me today, my, my little off and all, is brilliant but if you want to buy a, a knife you see all this I see video after video after video and a lot of them are just talking garbage about what's the best knife and the rest of it it's buy the knife that does what you want it to do don't don't go levering chunks of stuff out of it you you can break it you can break the point off and you can break the point off a $500 knife real easy this thing was I think this was about 80 bucks something like that and it, uh, this one has the Knife sharp. It's got a sharp on it and the steel on it. It's it's a it's a good knife. I like it. It's a, and as with everything more, it's pretty much indestructible. It's you know if you look after it, you can have no trouble with it. This thing, when I bought this, this was better. I think it's about a hundred bucks Canadian, something like that. But again, it's a great little knife. I had, I did have to put a, a better edge on it. It came reasonably sharp, but it, uh, I've got a better edge on it now, so that's good. But, Again, it, it does the, the job, and if you look after it, it'll last you a lifetime. There's no reason why you should ever have to replace that. Ever. Let's put that back in there. That's why I like to have uh, lanyards on things, because the chances are the only time you're ever going to lose that is <laughs> carelessly putting it down somewhere. The optional number eight, as I went through earlier, this thing, they come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes, but wooden handle, a lot of people customise these things. It's, like I say, I've, I've been using these knives for well over 50 years now. And it's the first one I bought of these, I think it was about eight years old, something like that. I was going out on my first camping adventure, and you know, my first ever camping trip was when I was five. But it, uh, my first solo camping trip was when I was eight. Uh, this was the knife that I chose to take with me because it's easy, it folds up, you can put it in your pocket and it's got a, a nice little lock on it so you can't accidentally cut your fingers on it. It holds a really good edge, it does lock in place, fantastic little knives and uh, for a, a knife to have in your pack, this thing can do most things. I mean you're not going to be splitting logs like that thing in there with this, no. but you, you can certainly um, create feather sticks real easy with this. And it, uh, you can cut up all your food with it. Fantastic little knife. They're, they're like 20 bucks, you know. Uh, they've been making these things, oh, I can't even remember. They've been making these things for bloody decades. And they haven't changed the design of them, which is when you know that something is actually a good product. Because they don't need to change the design of it. It's already at the pinnacle of its design. And that, uh, that is what you want. As with everything, Secure all your stuff when you finish with it. And the most important thing to have with you is tea. Yeah. You can do all this bushcraft stuff, you can build shelters, you can be digging through 12 foot snow drifts to build snow caves and all this kind of stuff. But if you don't have tea, <coughs> it's a waste of time. You've got to have tea. Yeah. It's the most important thing. Nice hot tea. Well, look at that. It just doesn't get any better than that. It just doesn't. Feet, fire, tea. What more can you want in life? You know. Some people have to be uh, 
continually entertained their entire life and if they're not doing something super stunning every day of the week their, their life's not complete I see all these people making uh, clickbait bushcraft as I call it and it's, uh, they're all out there building their little shelters and cutting down half a forest of ripping all the branches off all these trees just so they can make a video for a couple of hours yeah <laughs> yeah to make a decent shelter you're going to need probably anywhere between one to two hundred decent boughs off these trees well, as far as i concern, the trees need them more than i do that's why mankind invented shelters and sleeping bags and things works very very well yeah if you find yourself out in a situation where you absolutely have to and if i was in i don't know minus 30 out in the middle of this lot and i got stuck and i had nothing with me just a knife yeah i'm going to build a shelter I'm going to be cutting branches off of trees to build a shelter because it's the only way you're going to survive. But there are good ways of doing it and there are bad ways of doing it. You don't have to destroy half a forest just to make a, a nice little lean-to shelter with a raised bed and you know <laughs> all this other stuff that people do just to make a video and then it just all goes to waste. It's it's uh, The trees need it more than we do. So. That's why you will see me not making videos like that. That's why I don't do it. But, uh, I have tarps with me that I take with me if I go out anywhere. I've got all my stuff with me in the vehicle here today. So, use technology. We're pretty smart at that stuff. I can carry a tarp in my backpack or I can even, I've done it before, I've even put it in layers and inside my clothing. Just a small tarp. If you're traveling light and you haven't got all your stuff in a pack, now, you can put a tarp just then inside your layer. It's an extra layer. It helps keep you warm and it's easy to carry. Once it's in there, you don't even know it's there. And it's a... <laughs> and then you can just build yourself shelter pack it up and move on the next day you don't need to build a shelter that's six feet tall five feet wide and all that kind of stuff no if you're uh, out in the middle of nowhere and you're, you're trying to keep warm you don't want a huge space to the heat you want that shelter fairly low out of the wind yeah it's easy to heat when it's a small shelter small shelters are easier to heat than big shelters right i'm going to enjoy my tea I've had the rest of my breakfast. I've just done a, another hot dog and what have you. I'm just going to sit and enjoy this fire now, burn through the remaining firewood that I have, which is actually quite a bit, bought with me more than I thought I was going to bring. But I will uh, do that and I will sit and enjoy the day and then I'm going to head off and explore somewhere else. All right, thanks for coming along.